cross down live to a park. You'll see a man hiding in a park with a phone to his ear. It'll be Harold the H. Ah, 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 peacock. And he's going to talk about the 1886 foot racing swindle here in Ipswich. Good day, Harold the H. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, you, good morning, Danny. Yeah, Dan, I'm hiding down at Sandy Gallup this morning. Oh, it's Sandy Gallup because that's where the big foot races used to be run in Ipswich back in the day. Massive crowds, lots of money. Tell us this story and let it build and fold and have people get cynical on the out there <laughs> history out there website. Yeah, that's right. Look, thousands of people turned out to see the Western Star Lodge Grand Handicap at Sandy Gallup on New Year's Day in 1886. Now, Danny, like you said, this was back when sports days were huge and professional running was even bigger. Mm. The Grand Handicap was run over 150 yards, mm. and the prize money for the winner was £40, pounds, wow. which is the equivalent of almost $40,000 today. Wow! And, and the betting was huge with fabulous sums over we won if the handicap was in your favour. Mm. Now, in the final of the race that day, there were two runners from Roma. One was Jack Manicki, who mm. the previous year had won the match race of the century against the Mackay Meteor. Mm. The, the, the other was a well-known F.W. Lowe, who just weeks earlier in Roma had been beaten by an unknown. Mm. Other finalists, they, they were the Constable Alex Chalmers from the Lockyer Valley. Mm. He was the four-time Queensland champion. Oh. And there was a runner from Ipswich. He was a dyed-in-the-wool railway worker, Charlie McEnany. Charlie. Yeah, good old Charlie. But it was Lowe who crossed the line first. Uh, he was just, yeah, he was just inches ahead of McEnany in second, mm -hmm. while Wenicky, who had said noticeably ran below his best, mm -hmm. and Chalmers were a yard further back. Mm -hmm. But Danny McEnany, the Ipswich runner, he protested the result. Mm -hmm. He claimed that the winner yeah. wasn't F.W. Lowe at all. Who was but it? rather... It was a different runner altogether. Oh. The, and so the committee made their inquiries. The winner, Lowe, said he was F.W. Lowe, but he did have a cousin in Roma who had the same initials. Oh. Yeah, the third place, <laughs> Winicky, who was also from Roma, he said that he knew both Fred Lowe and Frank Lowe. <laughs> and then the fourth place, <laughs> the uh, the believable Constable Chalmers, <laughs> he said that winner... He said that the winner was indeed who he said he was. But then there was a man called Alec Wellstead. He'd come down from Roma, especially for the race. Right. Now, he also said that the winner was the right F.W. Lowe. And so the committee dismissed the protest and gave the £40 first prize to Lowe. Hmm. But as always, the controversy didn't oh, end there. Building. It's that's building. Because, that's because the word came down from Roma yeah. that the racing committee there knew only one FW Lowe, and that was Fred. Oh. And the description Sorry. of the winner didn't match that Fred Lowe at all. Right. And what's more, Fred Lowe was actually in Toowoomba that day. Ah, oh, fair dinkum. Fred, where's Frank? <laughs> yeah. And so, well, Frank never existed. <laughs> and in fact, the runner who crossed the line first was, in fact, a 19-year-old shearer called Larry Noonan. <laughs> Noonan was the young unknown who'd beaten the real low in the lead-up to the race, and they swapped identities. Mm. The committee, of course, backflipped and overturned the decision. Mm. It seems every single run in the race was in on the swindle, oh. except for Ipswich's McEnany. Oh, honesty, honesty. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. Died in the wool railway worker. Yeah. Anyway, all the conspirators are all banned for life, and the man Wellstead, who who probably started it all, he was barred from ever taking part in or appearing at any more sports gatherings ever again. Mm. But the thing is, they all went on to live successful, long lives, right. except for the young ring-in, Noonan. Mm. In 1891, when the Great Shear Strike was breaking out yeah. and the colony appeared on the cusp of civil war, yeah. he was elected shed delegate by the Queensland Shearers Union. Mm. Days later, Noonan Noonan inextricably disappeared, and months after that, he was reported dead. Huh? So all the evidence was gone. So, Danny, that's the story of the great foot race swindle, and that's Ipswich's greatest ever sporting controversy, I'd say, uh, uh, except unless when you're on the field, and it happened 135 years ago this year. What a great story. Damien, you've got to admit, you've been around the media a long time. Yep. The best storyteller I've heard. is not. It's an art to tell the story. Exactly. But he builds. He builds. Yep. He's got you, 
and then whammo, down on the squirrel grip, takes you back. And there's always that little twist at the a end. Twist. It's, it's a twist that gets you. Unbelievable. Poor old Noonan. You've got the <laughs> coke and sass somewhere. Yeah. Now, you've yeah, got his, Larry. history out there. Historyoutthere.com. You'll find the story up very soon. But check out all the other stories we've done over the last 12 months, hey? Yeah, well, in fact, there's about 15, 16 months there. There's about, uh, about 70, 70, 80 Ipswich stories there that, that you can look up. And this one's just just one of them. And I can guarantee, Danny, they're all 100% true. Yeah, of course. I don't have crap on this program. It's fact radio. Now, not only that, we're going to do a book one day. It's going to be brilliant for Ipswich. It will, Danny. And you're going to be the forward on the back. On the forward on the back, and David Cullen will be the mayor. Good on you. All right, that's uh, West Bremer Radio. That was historyoutthere.com's Harold the H. Ark, 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 peacock at 8.20.